David Seymour says dehumanising anti-mandate protesters outside Parliament won't do anything to help the situation. The eight-party leader met with protest leaders yesterday, much to the dismay of the Prime Minister. And David Seymour joins me now. Good morning, David. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Melissa. How many people were at the meeting? Three. And did you wear Actually, a mask? No, four. Uh, it was outside, so no. Were you in close proximity? No, distanced. Right, OK. So, I mean, outside still technically, I guess, if you're gathering, you should wear a mask. Is that because they didn't want you to wear a mask? No, it wasn't that at all. It was just a period of time where we felt more comfortable or not. How did you know who actually were the leaders? Because what we're hearing is this is a mishmash of groups. How did you know who to talk to? Well, I think it's fair enough to say that it's chaotic, but I was actually asked by Alistair Boyce, who is the guy who runs the Backbencher pub. Uh, I've been listening to him throughout this ordeal. Initially, uh, he was having to shut his pub because his staff were abused. That, that was the beginning. Uh, he got in touch a couple of nights ago and said, look, uh, first of all, I just want to open and get my business back, which is what just about everybody wants. Um, but second of all, uh, the situation is changing. Uh, some of those more odious elements of this process that no one can support are being pushed out. Uh, I know some of the people who are emerging as the leaders of it because it's been pretty chaotic. Uh, can you come and talk to them? Uh, so, so I was there to, to help a small business person with the situation. Right. So are you a champion for the protesters now? I don't know why you asked that question, to be quite honest. Well, you, you seem think, to be putting I yourself up as pretty, an intermediary. I th no, I think what's pretty clear um, is that I was asked by somebody who runs a business in the area who's been terribly affected, not just the last week, but actually by two years. Um, and what I said to these folks is, look, what you need to do is clear the streets because you can't complain about restrictions when you're stopping businesses uh, from operating. Same thing goes for Victoria University. Uh, you've got to ensure that those more odious elements um, are not part of the protest because no one can support threats and so on. You can't be talking about civil liberties while you're making threats of violence. Yeah. Do you sympathise with them in and, any way? And then, well, can I just finish the thought? Um, and then, having dealt with that, I think it's time for dialogue because these people are human, they're part of New Zealand. And at the end of this, we need to glue this country back together. Now, to answer your question about sympathy, I think it would be fair to say that it's possible to disagree with the nature of the protest and, and especially some of the incidents that occurred early on in it. Um, but the wider question is, when does New Zealand get its way of life and its freedoms back? And that is something that I think a lot of people would like an answer to. The protest is just the more concentrated form of the frustrations people have uh, with an ongoing, often controlling, uh, and cat handed response to COVID. Uh, and in that sense, you, uh, I think a lot of people have some sympathy. Yeah, you do mention, though, those uh, the extreme ends, I guess, of the abuse that people uh, have uh, endured. The Whanganui MP Steph Lewis says that they were banging on her, her windows at work in Parliament saying, come out, we'll find you and uh, we'll kidnap you. She's seven months pregnant. I mean, does meeting with people who are amongst a group like this send a message that if you're protesting and you bang and make a loud enough noise that someone will come and negotiate with you? No, I, I think the, the negotiation is not because of those events. In fact, it's not even a negotiation. Uh, it's actually setting some terms for what a negotiation would look like. Now, some people say you shouldn't have any kind of contact. Well, you know, so the Prime Minister says that it's the wrong thing to do. Just remember, she's part of the Labour Party, like Trevor Mallard, whose idea of dealing with a situation like this is to turn on sprinklers and loud music and call people names, which a number of other people uh, within the government have done. And the effect of that is that more people have shown up. Some people there, I believe, are actually now protesting against the government's re response to the protest. Uh, so clearly we want to get rid of that sort of behaviour. Yeah. I think uh the police need to target those people more clearly. But how do you resolve the overall situation? Uh, well, that's going to be a lot more challenging.
Just quickly, uh, David, the latest Curia poll has ACT um, dropping 4.9%. Is this a move to try and get some votes? No, I think that's a very cynical uh, way to look at a very serious situation. Um, and in any event, um, you know, the, that poll happened after the meeting, so I, I don't really know why you'd draw that connection. Uh, but I just hope that we can actually look at this situation in a more mature way than most people have so far and try to get to a stage where people in the vicinity of Parliament can get their way of life back. Uh, but also some of the frustrations of which this protest is just the more concentrated form that a lot of people share uh, can also be resolved. At Party Leader David Seymour, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very Thank much. You.